Hey guys, welcome back. And in this video, we're gonna take a, a bit of a closer look at the main grid, which is this section in the middle. This is where you add all your um, sound generation modules and where a lot of the routing is done. Um, when you start using Zebra with an initialized patch, you'll start with one oscillator, which is in this left-hand column here. Now, I've mentioned it before, but these are four uh, separate lanes that you can use. So you've got one here, one here, one here, and one here. And the signal flow goes from top to bottom. Now there's a couple of different types of modules that you can put in here. You've got things like oscillators, um, you've got normal oscillators, noise oscillators, and FM oscillators. Now they don't actually process any audio, they just pass audio through. So if you've got one oscillator on top of another one, oscillator two isn't doing any processing, both of these signals are mixed together and then passed on. It's only when you start adding things like filters and effects um, modules where you've got um, some distortion um, that the signal is actually being affected at all. Let me just get rid of this one for now. Now, the way that you do the routing as you add modules is you right click on the module that you want to route or have routed. And we'll just do a couple of little examples now. So you can either use just one lane. This would be more of a traditional kind of subtractive synthesis um, workflow or signal flow. But you can also use two or three other lanes as well. And remember, I made the analogy earlier, this is a little bit like a mixer. So if you have um, oscillator two over in the second lane, what you can do is add a filter underneath oscillator two. And the input for this filter is by default from the oscillator above it. But if you right click on the filter, you can also change that to the first input, which kind of leaves this one high and dry. But you've also got another type of filter called an XMF filter down here, and that's got two inputs. So you can see two lines going to that here. And if you right click on this filter, you've got a side chain option. So what you can do is you can have the input from lane one, but you can also have a side chain input from lane two. And the way it works is the input will come from whatever modules are next to it on this level, so parallel or above. So if I move this filter up, the input will then come from oscillator two on the second lane. But if you remember, I set oscillator, sorry, this filter in lane two, I set to have its input from lane one. So that's still rooted. It comes through this filter and into lane two. It's quite confusing, but what you need to do is you need to sit down and have a play with it and see how it all works together because it looks more confusing than it is. Then whatever you do up here is passed straight down to this section. And each lane, you've got the four lanes, you've got pan controls. Um, you can also route each individual lane either to the main outputs um, or you can send them to bus one or two. And bus one or two are represented here. So this is your main output with a master level. And then you've got bus one here, which is this lane and bus two here, which is this lane. This is the matrix where we add um, effects afterwards. And again, this is gonna be covered in a later video. So if I choose this first lane in the main grid to go out of the main outputs, this signal flow will come through here. And then what I can also do is I can change this lane here to bus one, and then this will pass down to bus one here. And what you've also got next to these um, routing tabs is uh, a mute button. So this will mute anything going in lane one. This will mute anything going in lane two, so on and so forth. And then the next control down, if you remember this one here, this empty tab with three little dots underneath it, this is the modulation slot for your pan on each lane. Now moving down, we've got uh, an envelope selector. So this lane will be um, affected by envelope one. This is an amp envelope. You can also assign this envelope to other things as well, but by default, it's an amp envelope. If you select envelope two here, you'll see an envelope pop over on the right. There you go. So this is now the amp, amp envelope for lane two. Let me put my teeth back in. And then you can use amp, amp 
Uh, you can use envelope three and four for these two lanes as well if you want to. So the possibilities here are starting to build up. You know, it's there's so much you can do. And then the last control is a volume control per lane. So this volume control is for this lane, two, three, and four, so on and so forth. And again, you've got a modulation slot to modulate the volume if you want to. So let's just, um, I'm going to ad lib a, a little, a simple little patch so you can see some of the routing. So let's initialize. I haven't prepared this, so I'm going to make it up as I go along. So what we'll do is we'll have um, a standard saw wave coming through lane one. And then I will open up oscillator two and I will choose a different kind of waveform. I'm just going to use one of the presets here for now. So we'll use PWM. And what that's done, if you notice what happened was this um, oscillator preset already has an LFO assigned to the um, pulse width here. Okay, so if you save an oscillator with um, a modulator assigned to it already, as you reload that oscillator, you'll get the modulation routed into it as well. Okay, so we've got two oscillators here. Um, what we will do is we'll open up an XMF filter on lane two here, because that's going to give us two inputs. And automatically, you've got oscillator one and oscillator two going through this now. Okay, so if I change the filter, it's, it's set up for a low pass at the moment. If I change this filter, you can hear it altering the sound, but if I lower the cutoff completely, you can still hear oscillator one, because oscillator one signal is all, all also going through this lane here. So oscillator one is passing through here and it's passing through filter one. So theoretically, if we mute lane one, we should hear both oscillators just going through this lane now, passing through this filter, which we do. So you can see some of the routing in action here. So let's switch this one back on. What I'll do now is I'll open up another filter on lane one. I'll just use a standard filter this time. And this means that oscillator one is going to pass through filter one, and it's going to pass through the XM filter one as well. So. If I close both of them down, you can hear both filters working. But I can open up the filter on lane one as well, which which just affects oscillator one. I know this is confusing, but I'm kind of making it up as I go along as well. Then we can open up the filter on lane two. So what, what else can we do here? Right, well, what we could do is let's just, um, I'm going to switch both of these filters off for a second. And I will apply um, an amp envelope to oscillator one. Let's switch off oscillator two as well. So let's make this one a little bit plucky. Okay, if I switch oscillator two back on, Oscillator 2 passes through that envelope as well. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll send Oscillator 2 through to Envelope 2 now. And you'll see Envelope 2 appear. Let's switch Oscillator 1 back off. And we'll make some adjustments to Oscillator uh, to Envelope 2. So let's turn the Sustain up and the Release up. What I might do is just reduce the LFO on this a little bit so we can just hear the note more clearly. So we've got sustained note now on oscillator two because oscillator two is passing through envelope two, which is here. And we've got a plucky note on oscillator one because oscillator one is passing through envelope one, which is up here. And actually let's drop oscillator one an octave as well so we can differentiate between the two notes. And maybe turn it up a bit. Okay, so let's turn both oscillators back on. So we've got oscillator one, which is an octave down. That's a low note, which is like a little punchy percussive pluck. And oscillator two is more of a sustained atmospheric sound. 
and you can see how we've done the routing here. Oscillator 1 passing through envelope 1, oscillator 2 passing through envelope 2. Um, what I might do as well actually is I might tune oscillator 2 to a fifth. Turn the filters back on. So we've got that filter one, VCF one, is only acting on oscillator one because it's routed through on lane one. So we can kind of fine tune the tone of that that oscillator with the uh, cutoff now. And don't forget, we've also got oscillator one passing through XMF one or the XM filter and oscillator two. So what I might do is I might use this LFO4 to modulate this cutoff a little bit and see how that sounds. Where are we? LFO4 down here. I want to speed that up a little bit. Okay, so that's working quite well. I think I understand what I've done. I hope you do as well. But what we can also do is if we switch over to global where our effects section is, we can send this second lane through to bus two. Oh, actually no, sorry, bus one, which is our second effect lane. That even confuses me. So if we send it through to bus one, all of a sudden our second lane disappears here. We can't hear this lane anymore. And that's because we haven't got this return value switched up enough. So, so remember, bus one, it's quite confusing. M the main bus is this first one. Bus one is the second one. And if we chose bus two, that would be the third one. So it's main, bus one, bus two. So as we turn up the return value for this bus one, we can hear our second lane coming back in. But what we can also do is we can apply effects. I, we'll do the effects video separately, as I've mentioned before, but let's just do something um, ad lib here. Let's choose something obvious like a reverb. And we'll just leave, leave it as it is. Now the reverb will only be affecting the signal that comes through this lane here. So if I mute this lane, we've still got our basic, bassy, low, single saw oscillator coming through here. Um, but the other signal, which is part of oscillator one and oscillator two routed through the XMF, comes through bus one, which is this bus here. So if I turn this back on, you'll hear just this lane being affected by the reverb now. Okay, so that's a brief, a brief um, example of the possibilities of this main grid. And um, you can do all sorts of trickery here. Um, I, I would encourage you to experiment as much as possible because there are things that you can do with Zebra that you simply cannot do with lots of other synths that you might have used. So moving on from that confusing video, I will see you in the next one.